rise and shine. You're just in time for NTV's Decision 2017. My name is Trevor Mbija. Always a pleasure having you with us on a day after the president-elect Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta was declared the president-elect. And on a day also KCP and KCC students start their exams. We want to wish them all the best. I know they're not watching, but the parents who are watching pass our regards to the children who are taking the exams. Tell them we wish them all the best. My name is Trevor Mbija. Here's what's coming up on the news. Before we get to that first, let me take you through the dailies before I jump the gun here. First up, Daily Nation, front page, president-elect Uhuru Kenyatta re-elected in repeat poll. Attention now turns to Raila Odinga's next move. We expect that to be announced probably later on today. Government assures of three levels of security in violence hit regions that after one million pupils are set to start their national exam today. The figures are down there and the full coverage of that story is on page 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. That's how important it is. The figures are there, 7 million four hundred and eighty three thousand eight hundred and ninety five that's ninety eight point two seven percent of the total valid votes which was seven million six hundred and sixteen thousand two hundred and seventeen which covers about thirty eight point eight percent turnout and we have figures for Ilo Dinga there and the Kuro Court Abdul Badida Jafet Kalui Michael Moraina Joseph Nyaga and Cyrus Girongo. You can get your copy of the Daily Nation to see all the details on that. Let me see what's happening on the second page. KCP tests will go on without hitches, declares Matiangi. The Minister of Education yesterday said tough measures have been put in place to ensure the standard eight national examinations that kick off today go on without any hitch. That complete story is on page two of the Daily Nation. Rowdy youth ambush Matiangi's convoy during tour of schools. Pupils hopeful of posting good results despite political tension. Primary school children from areas hit by violence during last week's repeat presidential election or yesterday gearing up for the national exams that starts this morning. Of course, the, the security has been guaranteed and we wish them all the best. Like I mentioned earlier on, page four results show my win in August was valid, says President Uru, President elect. Kenyatta. President Uru Kenyatta last evening described his re-election as a validation of his victory in the August poll whose results were nullified by the Supreme Court. That's part of the conversation we're going to have this morning on people and politics. Chebukati speaks of the heat as IBC boss. So Fuller Chebukati has been the man on the spot since the Supreme Court decided that the commission he leads bungled the August 8th election and that it declared results for the presidency could not stand. He also said that he's been used by several politicians and everybody else as a punching bag. All right, let's take a look at the back page of the Daily Nation. Two die, 26 hospitalized as cholera outbreak rages on. Two people have died and 26 others hospitalized following cholera outbreak in Embu County. The County Director of Health, Stephen Kanyara, Kanyaru, said the two died in Siakago and Runyenje's level four hospitals. That's on your copy of the Daily Nation. You can get your copy this morning and see everything else that I may have left out. That was just a sneak peek of it. Let's take a look at the standard front page. Bukati declares Uhuru. My victory today is part of a process likely to be subjected to the tests in the courts. We shall wait for all the electoral processes to be exhausted before we can talk of any dialogue. Let them first and foremost exhaust their constitutional right before deciding on the need for dialogue. I will not jump the gun. That is a direct quote from President Uru Kenyatta during his victory speech. Why all eyes are on Raila Odinga today? Opposition expected to respond to IBC declaration of Uhuru as winner and to give their supporters way forward after skipping the repeat poll. And of course the figures are there like I read them on earlier on. Let's take a look at the star. What's on the front page? Same thing. Uhuru re-elected president on 39% voter turnout. That was 38.8%. And the president says, ready for petition, he will submit to constitutional path, no matter the outcome. The attributes there, the poor info into Catholic Bishop of Eldred Diocese, Cornelius Corriero, passed on yesterday. Condolences goes out to the family. And that is on the front page of the star. Let's take a look at how your money is doing in the business daily. Task is to guarantee 3 billion Nakumat debt. Well, the battle to save Nakumat markets yesterday took a new turn after rival Tuskies offered to inject 650 million shillings into the Trumbull retail chain and recurring payment of creditors that have done have guarant guarantees of between 1.5 billion and 3 billion for the outstanding debt. Safaricom Collymore leaves for treatment 
energy agency to set gas prices, equity post 3% to drop in net profit, Vivo to list on London Bulls, Uhuru hints at dialogue with opponents. That's on your copy of the Business Daily. You can get your copy this morning to find out everything else that I may have left out. Like I said, those are just sneak peeks of what's happening. Another uh, day after the president-elect was declared by the chairperson of the IBC, Wafula Chebukati. Listen, here's what the news is looking like. I hereby declare Mr. Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta and Mr. William Samway Ruto as President-elect and Deputy President-elect, respectively. Uhuru Kenyatta declared President-elect a second time in two months. Will it hold? We cannot fix the politics of this nation if we do not fix the economics. The economics. Chebukati reflections on repeat polls and what it will take to keep Kenya united. Spectral insecurity looms large as national exams kick off countrywide. We are very sorry and sad to announce the sudden death of our brother, Right Reverend Bishop Cornelius Corire of the Diocese of Eldoret. And Kenya mourns the passing of Catholic bishop credited with peace building in the rift. Well, before we get you through your daily dose of news, let's cross over to Mombasa, where our very own Peter Mongangi has woken up early to find out what's happening. Mongangi, what's the latest from where you are? Thank you, Trevor Ombija. We are at the Kisauni sub-county offices here in Mombasa. And as you can see there on your screen, some of the examination materials being sorted, uh, sorted out by the officers here in charge of the uh, exercise school head teachers on the other side waiting for their turn to pick up their materials. And uh, on my right, I have one of the head teachers who has already picked his uh, Sijui kama utatueleza jina lako, shule gani na mmejipanga vipi kwa mtihani huu. My name is David Mlanda. My name is David Mlanda. I am the head teacher at Shimolatewa Primary School. This morning we have come to our sub county uh, education offices to collect examination materials. My school is Shimolatewa uh, Primary School. And I want to say that we are happy this morning to have started the exercise. Our last year was a bit hectic. And uh, it's like all people were a bit worried because they didn't know how the days would be. And it, but was now, the first time. it was the first time. Yes. But now we are used. And I want to say that as we come to collect the papers, our education office, of, uh, officers are here. Mr. Kike, our regional um, commission of education. And um, we have our deputy county commissioners are here. The head teachers are here. And I want to say that uh, we are happy because even uh, there has been decentralization. We used to have a bigger, um, a bigger lot of us from Kisan Sub County, but now some of them have been taken to Nyali, and now we are remaining with the Bamburi. In terms of preparations, maybe before I let you go, because I know you have to be in, in classes on time, are you satisfied that you are ready? We are very much ready. Our children are set. Uh, we were given instructions from the headquarters, Kenek, and we did the same. We are now set, and I want to believe that as we go back to our schools, we expect the exam to start and end up well uh, without any hitches, wake ups. Thank you. Thank you, Mwalim. Welcome, welcome. Asante sana. All the best as you administer the examination. Thank you, sir. I also just want to talk briefly to the, uh, the person who is heading the entire exercise. Tell us your name, sir, and uh, how is it looking in the coast region? How many candidates are involved? My name is Abdikadir Kike, the regional coordinator of coast. I wish first to take this opportunity to to wish the 84,088 candidates who are sitting for exam in this region the best of luck in the, the, the exam. Yet we are just starting. Otherwise, uh, uh, adequate arrangement has been made for security, for officials who are manning the examination centers. So we have set for the exam. We have no problem at all. 
Last year, we did not see maybe any cases of uh, cheating here in this region. This time, uh, what are some of the measures you have put in place to ensure that that doesn't happen? The issue of the containers first help us because we have been very strict and the exam council also have been very, very strict and the ministry led by our CS, we are very strict on the management of the exam. So all the loopholes have been closed, therefore we are, we are, we are still continuing. We don't expect any irregularities in the, in the examination anymore at all. That has been stamped out completely. Because we understand it's only two people who have the key to the container, right? Yes, it is the deputy county commissioner and the sub-county director. Those are the only people who are having the, uh, the, exam, the, 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 the key to the containers in every sub-counties. And maybe before I let you go, we understand that uh, this time round, every, the details of the candidates are put on the already inscribed on the papers. What was the wisdom maybe beha behind that? To avoid any, any impersonation and to ensure that you know, examination is done by individual candidates. So it is personalized uh, to each individual's candidates. For the entire coast region uh, as at this moment, how is the situation mm -hmm. looking like? Are there areas where you've been ab unable to deliver the materials? Maybe? You know, all the materials have been delivered and the exam is starting. I've, called, I've already talked to most of the county directors and uh, we, we, have, we are starting off at six in every sub-county. We have no issues at all. Thank you, Abdikadir Kike is heading this exercise and maybe uh, the county co commissioner of Mombasa Evan Sachok is here with us also in terms of securing this particular exercise here in Mombasa County how is the situation looking like and uh, arrangements also we know it's coming at a time when uh, politics is also happening thank you very much Mr. Mwangangi first I would like to confirm that Mombasa County we are set it is all systems go uh, this morning we have started uh, distributing all the exam papers to over 400 uh, primary schools in Mombasa County and uh, we have deployed adequate security. We want our children to sit the exams in a uh, conducive environment and therefore that is where we have deployed adequately to ensure that there is security in all the examination centers. Yes. Some of those centers were used as uh, polling uh, stations just a few days ago for the repeat presidential election. Uh, will that in any way maybe affect the delivery of the examination? It will not. Uh, that is why we have deployed adequately uh, to ensure that there is no interruptions in uh, those examination centers. And I wish to appeal to the residents to keep off from the primary schools because uh, those will be examination centers. All primary schools are examination centers and we need to maintain peace around the examination centers. So we'll also have adequate security and also patrols along those areas to ensure that the environment is conducive for national examination. And maybe uh, before I let you go, we also have KCSE coming up. Uh, any plans for that? Yes, we are ready. We are ready for the month-long uh, examination period. Uh, the containers are in the Deputy County Commissioner's compounds, and uh, the Deputy County Commissioners are the ones who will be dispensing the, the issuance of the examination papers. They will be here on time. I'll also be going round in all the six sub-counties. So we are set and we are ready, and we will deliver and uh, the integrity of this year's national examinations. Thank you so much, County Commissioner Evans Achoki, County Commissioner of Mombasa. Just uh, Trevor, one more time, I just want to show you where the examination materials are stored. They are stored in that particular green 20-foot uh, uh, container, which has two locks, and it's only the sub-county directors of education and the uh, sub-county commissioner, uh, commissioners who have the keys to that particular container and also on this side uh, one more time uh, seals for these boxes which contain the materials were broken in our presence this morning confirmed everything that is everything is okay this time they have labeled um, they have labeled the boxes for for every day like for this one it's clearly labeled KCPE day one Mombasa County Kisaoni collection point this Kisauni DCC's office to ensure and they have the serial numbers to ensure that everything is goes to its designated area as well as the examination materials on the other side 
names of the centers have been inscribed in this um, in the papers themselves for for example in this one there is it's the english paper uh, language paper which will be administered this morning today there will be english language and english composition tomorrow it will be kiswahili lugha na kiswahili insha and then social studies and the ncre will be on thursday and also uh, when the exercise will be ending so head teachers of primary schools public primary schools and private schools are now lining up to sign and to ascertain that they have received the materials here and uh, they will be taking them to the centers we understand that at about eight uh, the examinations will be kicking off in uh, schools across uh, this county as well as the six counties here in Mom uh, here in the coast region trevor students next to you right now but the ones you spoke to earlier are they ready for the exams yes they told us uh, we spoke to some of them schools we visited yesterday and they've been telling us that they are prepared they in fact some teachers told us that they knew uh, this would be an election year before uh, from as early as january and they started preparing their uh, their uh, their pupils and their candidates early enough to ensure that uh, that that does not affect them Trevor, as you can see behind us so many security officials are uh, drawn from different uh, dip, uh, units of the police uh, service national police service all of them armed to ensure that this exercise goes on properly and we understand this is the situation in other sub county offices here in Mombasa and of course we are we will be visiting some of those centers and institutions to see how the situation is uh, in in those other areas Trevor Thanks, Peter. That's Peter Mongangi speaking to us from Mombasa. And of course, like we said earlier, we wish all the students all the very best. Thanks for waking up very early, Peter Mongangi there in Mombasa, just giving us an overview of all the preparations that are ready for exams that kick off this morning. Well, President Uru Kenyatta has promised to work hard for the benefit of the Kenyan people, despite their political leanings or whether they voted or not in the October 26th presidential election. Kenyatta, who was handed the winner's certificate, yesterday at the Bombers of Kenya, was declared winner after garnering about 7.5 million votes, which is 98% of the vote. Ofula Chabukati, the national returning officer of the IBC and the chairperson of the commission, stated that the voter turnout in the repeat election was 38.84%. Leila Mohamed does more. I hereby declare Mr. Uhuru Mekai Kenyatta. For the second time in under three months, President Uhuru Kenyatta received the winner's certificate from the IEBC after being declared the winner of the presidential poll. Once again, as you all know, I have been here before. <laughs> This time, he was announced the winner after garnering 7,483,895 votes. His nearest competitor, ODM's Raila Odinga, garnered 73,228 votes, which was about 1% of the total vote. The other presidential contenders did not reach the 100,000 mark combined in the final tally. Now we can begin the process of reimagining our nationhood. But as we do so, I must remind you of my commitment to the constitutional path and the rule of law. President Uhuru Kenyatta not showing up at the Bombers of Kenya until 5 p.m., way after the final results were announced by the IEBC Commission and Election Secretariat, had given the final figures in terms of how Kenyans voted last Thursday. Uhuru Kenyatta, 7 million. 483,895. In his acceptance speech, he acknowledged the length of time that the country has been in an election mood and the moments of uncertainty that he says have affected many key sectors in the country and that it was time to get back to work. I, as a Kenyan, celebrate our resilience as a nation, but I also celebrate our resilience 
and the resilience of our democracy, the resilience of our people, and also the resilience of our institutions. Any other country experiencing the turns and twists of our recent electoral process would have burst, burst asunder. Wafula Chebukati puts the final figures at 7,600,016,217 voters who participated in the repeat election with 37,713 rejected votes. This figures from less than 270 constituencies, the remainder of which the IEBC has explained will not affect the national tally much and due to insecurity in the four counties that did not participate in the repeat poll, a third postponement would not change things in the region. The narrative so far locally and internationally, therefore, that voter turnout was low is inaccurate. It is nothing but a consistent history of political convenience and a tirade of conjecture statistics that some of us have continued to exercise. President Kenyatta has hit out at Raila Odinga for going to court, getting a repeat verdict and abandoning the process midway. You cannot choose the opportunity to exercise a right and therefore and thereafter abscond from the consequences of that choice. He has also noted that he chose not to sign the amendment bill of the electoral laws out of choice and respect for the rule of law, even though he had every right to do so. But when the bill was brought to me for signature as president, I was also compelled by my own conscience to go back to the origins of law. If an act of parliament is a direct expression of the will of the people, are the people happy with the law? President Uhuru Kenyatta has insisted that his win was the will of the people and was not marred by violence as compared to his competitors. The IEBC have made their announcement as to the verdict in a free and fair democratic election, there is still another process. So we shall wait for that process and we shall wait for its outcome. So therefore, those who will want to ask me, are you going to engage in dialogue with so and so and so and so, let them first and foremost exhaust their constitutionally laid out processes let them go to court, let them do whatever they want. <laughs> Nobody shall deny them of their constitutional right. Those issues we shall discuss later. Leila Mohammed, NTV. IBC Chairperson of Fulache Bukati says the October 26th elections were free and fair despite an early assessment that he could not guarantee the election would be credible. Chebukati says all the concerns he had raised when he expressed his fears were addressed. While he is not happy that the election could not take place in 26, 25 constituencies due to the threats of violence, Chebukati says the commission did all it could but could not succeed. He has, however, called on politicians to address the country's economy to ensure the scenes seen in this electoral cycle are not there in future. Andrew Chieng has more. In his long speech before he formally declared the final results and the winner of the fresh presidential election, the IEBC chairman Wafula Chibukati insisted that despite the political security and weather challenges, he was happy with the outcome of the election. On the 18th of August 2017, I made a statement regarding the state of the Commission's preparedness to conduct the fresh presidential ele election, and I gave conditions that needed to be satisfied before we could embark on this mandate. I'm satisfied that we were able to meet these conditions that have enabled the Commission to deliver <laughs> what to us, and I believe to all Kenyans and observers, is a free, fair, and credible election. 
Even though the commission did not hold elections in 25 constituencies in Siaya, Migori, Kisumu and Homa Bay counties, he says that the commission had done everything to ensure that the exercise was carried out. He, however, laments the lack of security for the commission's staff. I respect the choice of every Kenyan to exercise their right to vote or not to vote. As has been evident, regrettable and unfortunate events in, in any democracy, I mean our democracy unfolded in 25 out of the 290 constituencies. This made it impossible for the Commission to carry out the electoral process despite having made several attempts to put in place electoral infrastructure required for the Kenyan people to elect their leaders. The chairman says this election cycle has been like no other, with lives lost among protesters and even commission staff. I call upon all of you to stand up and observe a moment of silence in memory of the dearly departed. He has also come under attack and criticism from his own commission and politicians. Unfortunately, I've watched as people seeking for punching back found a very good one in me. I find it interesting that while some, some say how weak a chairman I am, those in IBC say this chairman is too principled and cannot be influenced. So we have all these scenarios, have been called names, but this just goes to show that when we have an assignment and we have focus on putting Kenya first, we still will not please everyone. He says the problems the country has seen during this period need to be addressed once and for all. He compares Kenya to other countries, especially in West Africa, which have managed to hold successful elections and move on afterwards without the lingering suspicions and divisions seen in Kenya. Why is the presidential elections so hardly fought? What are the roots of the polarization that consumes Kenyans who are as to our friends and turn into adversaries every election cycle? Why is the Electoral Commission never perceived as a fair umpire? Chabukati says it is the state of the majority of the population that has led to the violence and mistrust normally witnessed before elections. In the words of Nelson Mandela, as long as poverty, injustice, and gross inequality persist in our world, none of us can truly rest. A constitution is as good as the environment in which it operates. We cannot fix the politics of this nation if we do not fix the economics. The economics. If there is no petition filed to challenge the election within the next seven days, then Uhuru Kenyatta could be sworn in to serve his second term on the 14th of November, that being the first Tuesday, 14 days after the declaration of the results. Andrew Ochieng, NTV. All right, and that is where we start our discussion on people and politics this morning after the events of yesterday. I want to introduce my guest beginning from my immediate left, Ombudsman Emeritus, Honorable Tienda Molo, a member of parliament. Then we have Dr. Miguna Miguna, advocate and lawyer also. And then we have Mithika, Honorable Mithika Linturi, Senator Meru, and Kimani Wamatangi, Senator Kiambu. Thanks for making time for us this morning. Mr. Chebukati has raised very fundamental questions on why Kenyans turn into enemies and why the presidency is so hotly contested. But before we get into that, Honorable Tiende, let me start with you. What is your reaction to the events yesterday? Will, will this declaration hold? Well, first of all, I think it's an opportune time to mourn uh, Bishop Correll. I think he was one of those who worked for peace in this country. And his death robs us of, uh, you know, some of the most sober voices we need in this country. It is also opportune to wish all the class eight candidates success, especially those in my constituency, Rarieda. Uh, having said that, uh, Trevor, before I answer your question, the, the, maybe in this show today or in another show, I would also like us to examine two things that I think are, are, are dire. One is the death of independent institutions in this country. And yes. the questions that Chebukati asked, yes. he should be able to answer them because he's one of the, uh, the, the causes of those very questions. We'll get into IBC those questions is one of them. Our, our uh, results for the him. other one that would be interesting to look at, mm -hmm. I think, is um, the absence of independent media on critical issues that would help us, such as the election results. 
uh, which is simply reduced to a jubilee said this, NASA said this. We need independence. Having said that, I think the events of yesterday, it was the culmination of a charade. It was the culmination of a process that is not legitimate, a process that does not help us in cohesion or healing, a process that uh, you know, puts us on the path towards more problem rather than towards solutions. Why would you call it a charade and a culmination of a charade? Because the president also mentioned that when you choose to exercise a right, then you cannot abscond from the consequences of that choice. Absolutely. NASA decided to go to court. They were told that the election should be done in 60 days. They decided to abscond. Why would this be a charade then? The issue is not whether NASA boycotted. The issue is why they boycotted. And the reasons why NASA boycotted, I think, have become <coughs> self-evident. If anybody doubted why Raila Molodinga did not agree to participate in this process, what you saw in Bomas and what you saw in this country clearly demonstrate beyond doubt that had Raila participated, he would simply have been in yet another fraud. And at the last, last week in this show, I said, and it has come to pass, that ultimately, this will not be about the election of the president. It will be about... Um, uh, it will be kind of a vote of confidence on IBC and on the presidency. It has come to pass that actually less than 20% voted in that favor. And I think that is a big dent on President Uru Kenyatta's uh, legacy and mandate to govern this country. Well, IBC gave the number 38.8%. But well, let me bring in Dr. Miguna on this. I want to appreciate you. I know you were here last, very late last evening, but these are extraordinary times. So we appreciate you coming back this morning. Trevor, so, I'm happy to be here. Good yes. morning. Good morning. I joined Dr. Tiende in morning um, uh, Bishop uh, Correr, but, but I go beyond that. I mourn the more than a hundred innocent civilians who have died under police violence, perpetrated violence. I also mourn and express my sadness at the attack last night by the Mungiki in police. I, I have received reports in police vehicles and with guns in Kibra, Kariobangi, Ruaraka, Uruma, Madare, Narok, and Kawangwari. Have these reports been reported to the police? I, I, even, have, I even have pictures of, of the attack and the houses burning. Have you taken so, that to no, the no, police? No, no, let me finish, please, Trevor, please. Yes. Uh, it is important that the media is not there to muzzle us and is not there to prevent uh, us from stating facts, whether the media wants to state them or not, because I don't speak for the media, but I can speak for my community, my community being Kenyans that are currently under siege by a brutal force, a police force combined with the militia. Now, what happened yesterday, uh, a friend of mine called Ireri, uh, a, a very good comrade of mine, does not call it an election, he calls it an exercise. Uh, a charade cannot be an election. It's, 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 it's not even resembling an election. It's not pursuant to the law and the constitution. If you tell anyone that between 6.5 million Kenyans and 7.4 voted in an election out of 20 million uh, people, and if you told anyone with common sense that Raila Odinga got 73,000 votes in the Republic of Kenya, I think you would be categorized as a lunatic or one that completely is bereft of any common sense. There is no one in this Republic, whether you hate Raila Odinga or not, who believes that he can get 73,000 votes. And for the media to peddle this, you repeat it as if it is a fact, when we know it is not a fact. So what happened yesterday was a travesty of justice. It demonstrates that it's not just our institutions. Uh, it's a crisis of leadership. It's a failure of leadership. Look at what Chebukati said. Many in the commission, I quote him verbatim. And of course, forget about the grammatical and, and syntactical problems in his statement. He says, many in the commission believe that this chairman is too principled and cannot be influenced. Of course, too principled too to be influenced would have been the correct English statement. Yeah. 
But the question you ask yourself, if many in the commission believe that being principled is a problem, as he confesses, then just like we are saying, this is not a commission. This is not an independent uh, constitutional body that can render a credible election. Then listen to the president's speech. Yeah. He talks of free and fair democratic election. Never mention the word credible. Even Chebukati talks about credibility without specifying what is it about this uh, charade yeah. that qualifies as credible. We will get into the details yes. as to why I believe it was worse than a farce. Okay. And the, the tragedy is this. Kenyans have spent over 50 billion shillings, mm -hmm. hard earned shillings, in this exercise that has produced nothing but a mockery okay. of democracy. Okay. And we must interrogate it. Okay, I'd like to. I'd like you yes. to clarify uh, to on two things. You said yes. there were attacks that happened. I, I don't purport to speak for the media either. But yes. would it have been better if you said that the attacks that happened? I have reported this to the police, and nothing has happened. Because well, even if we report it, and the, these Trevor, issues are not taken to the police, Trevor, isn't all, it pointless? First of all, yeah. You know, I was at the NTV station last night. Yes. So, and you also know, I think it is public knowledge that I don't live in Kebra, Kariobangi, Ruaraka, Huruma, Madare, Narok, and Kawangware. Absolutely. And no one can live in those places at the same time. Absolutely. You also know that last <coughs> night when we were here, and many of the, the panelists talked about it, we were receiving reports. So say, for example, you receive reports today from Kisumu that residents are under attack by a militia. Are you telling me with pictures? that I can't speak about it just because I have not reported it to the police? Is it my responsibility and duty to report to the police what is in the public knowledge? I have here pictures of residents, uh, you know, uh, people's residents burning okay. at night. Okay. This was sent at night yesterday, and we spoke about it on air yesterday. Okay. Now, obviously... <laughs> People will speak about what happened today. All right. But the fact of the matter is this. A tragedy such as this cannot be, um, uh, cannot be overlooked, okay. uh, cannot be side-swiped <laughs> on the basis that it has not been reported to the police. As I have told you before, residents reported having militia in police vehicles. They were not dressed in police uniform, okay. but they had guns, they were touching uh, buildings, they were shooting live bullets okay. at people, and I believe today it is the responsibility of the media okay. to be able to bring it out. All right, you made your point. Senator Mithika, yeah. what do you make of the events of yesterday and, of course, the discussion that Yeah, first, right uh, before making any uh, comment on yeah. yesterday's events, I also want to associate myself with the uh, comments of... Uh, Dr. Amolo Miguna, to the extent of uh, wishing uh, the, the, our candidates uh, the best of luck in the examinations, and also uh, uh, sending my condolences to the endowments of uh, Erondoret for the great loss of uh, a peace, a peaceful, loving, uh, an icon of peace. Uh, in the name of uh, Bishop Korir. But uh, Trevor, looking at what happened uh, yesterday, allow me to <coughs> say that, uh, yeah, indeed, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta was, elect was uh, uh, pronounced or declared as winner uh, 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 in the elections that took place on uh, the 26th. I have no doubt that uh, indeed President Uhuru won. And uh, as he said, that was an affirmation. I think that the last uh, time when we had the election on 8th, he had really won. Actually, remember in his statement, he said that the numbers, the, 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 the number of votes were not in contest in the election, in the, uh, in the election petition. So I thank the people of this country that tended uh, to the call to get the turnout and exercise their democratic right as provided in form by Article 38 of okay. the Constitution of Kenya. 
by giving us the opportunity to have a president and uh, disregard, uh, uh, disregard <coughs> those prophets of doom that really did want to see Kenya move forward. I want to say that uh, I am saddened by Hamolo's uh, sentiments uh, uh, that uh, what we saw yesterday is uh, the beginning of the death of uh, uh, institutions, institutions that uh, actually uh, those people that turned out uh, to vote is a small fraction of those that did not turn out and uh, ends that those didn't then is uh, an indication that those are Raila Odinga supporters. Uh, actually, th that is the that is a big lie. And uh, I I personally feel or persuaded to believe that that when you look at the numbers that they turned out, compared to what uh, uh, to the numbers that came out last time. You realize, you realize that with the intimidation that took place in the country, yeah. the uncertainty that was there in the election courts, in the courts, elections were not beyond, and uh, considering that a number of Kenyans also vote within their constituencies, mm -hmm. and uh, most of them work outside the, their constituencies, that was, in my view, was really a really a big turnout, okay. and especially. Uh, uh, I want to say yeah. that when, uh, and I actually think uh, Meguna, time has come to liberate the people in Migori, Nyanza, Kisumu, and, uh, and Homa Bay. We require to have civic uh, education and serious uh, civil society going to educate people in that particular area to understand that this country uh, of the civic duties of an individual. What do you mean uh, when you say liberate the people? The, the, because I, that can be translated into very many with things. Yours, with your due respect, yes. <coughs> you know, Professor, uh, 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 Dr. Molo is a very senior counsel in this country, mm -hmm. very learned, and we cannot doubt his wisdom. But when you find that uh, when uh, Baba says don't vote, Amolo and Greece, and without question, then it means something must be very wrong. And then Bondios, be it whether in whatever social class, because I've been taught by certain professors, in, uh, and uh, before we went for election, I was asking uh, one of them who is a, uh, who we share and desk yeah. with, uh, whether he's going to vote. And he says, Professor, he says, I will not go vote because Papa has sent. But do you think, and you also do you remember, think... even the last time when we were in the constitutional debate, yeah. if professors were saying, when Papa has read the constitution, then there's no need for us to, to win. But is the flip side also true? If yes. the president said, go and vote, and you go and vote, does that Let make you a psychopath? Let me tell you, you told me not to go and vote. I, I will go and vote, because I know why. He cannot direct me on whether to vote or not to vote. Because it's a personal decision. Okay. And I know there are some decisions that will not be directed by anybody. Because I, I, I have an obligation to my concerns. I have an obligation to my people that elect me. So okay. what I exercise yeah. is respect for offices. Okay. And where we differ in terms, uh, uh, where we are likely to differ, I will explain why I differ. Okay. okay. Let, let's, um, let's bring in one more time. Let me this finally, so that we see. Yeah. Uh, if you allow me, let, let me briefly. finally uh, answer Miguna because yes. Miguna says, and it is important that he has also brought about the issue of the armed people going around mystery, uh, harassing <coughs> people and the failure of the media to bring it to light. Miguna, please, I think I thank you for bringing this matter. And I wish the 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 director of uh, the, the the inspector general of police the president because he has the instruments of power and has taken hold to protect the lives and citizens yeah. of this country i hope he's listening because i some people took it lightly or thought there was a joke when nasa and railo being decided to form the national resistance movement people thought there was a joke this is the team and this is the the wing that is going out terrorizing kenyans and this is the armed militia. The armed militia is a NASA, is a NASA, is a NASA wing. And for that matter, the, whether the KNDF, whether the police, other police forces must be on high alert 
to deal with these characters. Except that is not true. We don't have evidence to show that the NRM are the militia because you know the, the point they are making is that the people in that other side have been attacked. Can they attack their own people? They, they, in my view, they can't be any, any other people because where, where Meguna is saying they are moving around yeah. and having had that information by nine, by yeah. late in the night, receiving information, in my view is that he was getting confirmation, being told we have executed the plan. Okay. Because we expect the National Intelligence Service and Everton Bondeos working okay. all night to secure Kenyans, okay. that information should not come okay. out. I'll let so Miguna respond to that in a bit. But and the NASA team, okay. probably, these are all the right. architects. I'll let them respond to that in a bit, but let's bring in Kimani Wamatangi on this. Kimani, what do you make of yesterday? And I saw you there, so what did you see <laughs> yeah. while you were there? Well, uh, thank you. Trevor, good morning. Good morning. Uh, let me let me also take the opportunity to uh, to greet Kenyans this morning. Okay. It, it, it's, a, it's a very, it, it's a day that's full of events. Uh, from yesterday to today, uh, one, the passing on of, uh, of, of uh, Coril, you know, su su such a, you know, Bishop Coril, su su such an astute Kenyan who's okay. served this country in, in, in many ways, not only as a, as a, as a, as a as a church leader, but also as a community leader, somebody who's, who's impacted the community very posit positively. So, so let me first express my very, very sincere condolences to, to the whole nation, to the family of uh, Bishop Correa, and also express my condolences also to all other Kenyans, especially who've lost their lives during this time when uh, there has been very senseless violence. Uh, very senseless, I say, because um, Many Kenyans lost their lives who should not have ever lost their lives uh, because there is an electoral process that's, that's going on uh, to, uh, to, to settle a competition on who will, who, who will sit in which office. And, yeah. and that is not a reason enough for any person, wherever they, they live in this country, to lose their lives. And I say so very mindful of the fact that uh, uh, many politicians in this season or, or, or this electoral process, yeah. chose to use Kenyans as, as pawns. You know, I mean, uh, the, that uh, Japanese concept of kamikaze fighters, where you get your people, uh, send them on a death mission, knowing that uh, you're putting them in harm's way, knowing that you're giving them the wrong instructions, know, knowing that you are sending them to do things that are going to not only you know, maim them, but yeah. uh, also get them to lose their lives. And so I want to, uh, to say, and especially because my friends here, uh, Tiende Amolo, Miguna Miguna, from the NASA coalition are here, and I'm sure they have a voice that reaches their, their, their leaders. Okay. That they should really tell their leaders that, that, that this is time to change tact. It is it's no longer uh, agreeable. It's no longer uh, politically acceptable. That, that the way to, to, to position yourself, the way to justify or claim political position is, is by using uh, your people uh, to, 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 to the extent whereby you are literally sacrificing them. And, 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 and for that matter, I, I want to tell them uh, that uh, it, it, it's bad. I've heard that word used quite a number of times, Trevor. Yeah. You know, you know the, 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 that term that was used by Miguna there about uh, militia, about uh, you know attacks, and they're using it so casually, so 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 casually. And uh, and, and uh, I've also had my colleague here, you know, on, on that issue of NRM. We, we must speak as Kenyans this yeah. time, and we must speak for our people and okay. stand up sober and straight and say that is not possible. Okay. Now we've been there, we've seen the losses that that, that we've suffered, we, we we've seen the destruction. So we are not going to go that way. Period. And so with their NRM story and, and all that business about resistance and fighting and whatever, they need to take a look, stop, think, and listen okay. to Kenyans. You know, um, lastly, let me also uh, wish all candidates mm -hmm. uh, on, a, on a lighter uh, okay. note, all ca candidates sitting their exams yeah. from this morning. Actually, I have a daughter who is uh, sitting uh, her exams uh, from this morning. So I also want to wish them all the best. Okay. And, and uh, I know in spite of all the interferences, and you can imagine, Trevor, yes. I assume it was you or me or Otiende Amolo or Miguna who was going to sit for an exam this morning, yeah. having gone through all the 
stuff we've had to go through and you expected to be prepared to go and sit for your exam and pass. And, and imagine these kids have invested years and years. And it is so determinant. You know how our education system works? Yes. That, that uh, you exam, you, you fail at, at uh, class 8 or O level, then, then uh, th that means that you've made a complete turn either to the left or right. Yeah. So, so I want to wish them well and say, may God be, be with them. And uh, okay. the events of, of yesterday and, and the, the events of this electoral time does not affect them. Okay. Now, lastly, let me comment on what you said. Very saying. briefly, yes. What you asked about, uh, what do I make of the events of yesterday? And um, I, I, would, I would want us to, to be in agreement that uh, we'll be factual in this, in this show all the time, yeah. irrespective of really who, whom it hurts or whom it doesn't. And, and because sometimes, Trevor, we speak casually here, but, but, but we get recorded very clearly by Kenyans who listen to us, and they use this as markers in their life either to determine what they think or what they decide, and more so that even young people who watch us every morning and listen to us look at us and determine us as history makers. Okay. And, and, and so I want to say two things very quickly. You know, I'm, I'm aggrieved, seriously, because I find that the game, the game... And to you borrow Otiende Amolo's word, the charade that they themselves in their coalition have taken this country through is really unforgivable if you ask me. Because all those things that you hear us speaking about this morning, the loss of lives, the destruction, the loss of business, the hurting economy, yeah. is all as a result of a grand scheme okay. that is well intended and calculated. Yeah. I'll say two things. First, you see, when NASA and their leadership know and knew that they want to pursue a genuine cause to address certain issues about the elections of the 8th, they chose the correct way. So they chose to go to the Supreme Court because they know it bears results. Okay. Now when they choose, or when they chose to play the game now that we are calling the charade, and which is now they choose to go to where they know there will be no results, but it will result into what is happening now, and so they go to the rallies, they go out in, in public domain and claim on ambiguous issues and, and demands that they were calling irreducible minimums. Mm -hmm. and, and they base those so-called irreducible minimums, which they have intentionally placed and, and, and queried in a domain they know they will not get answers. Okay. And because it is not intended to get answers, yes. but to create the green lock, and hence the atmosphere and circumstances that we have right now. Okay. And, and, and because... Because these this, this people, they know very, very well that, that to be able to get out of a genuine concern that you have, that would be either litigated in law or would be dealt with by legislation. They know the channels to follow. Okay. And, and that is why you've had uh, Otiende Amolo, James Orengo, Miguna Miguna, all people who are not only experienced but knowledgeable okay. and privileged to hold positions in Parliament and in the Senate, okay. who also know that once you drive your course this way, then it will give you this result. So I say this in summation, that uh, this problem that we've had, the scenario created by NASA, that now has got us to where they are, they are saying we are, that now they are forming uh, a resistance movement because they are claiming that the elections were, 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 were not credible, they were not legitimate. It is their own making. Okay. But, but let, me, let me congratulate uh, Kenyans and let me congratulate Uhuru Mwegai Kenyatta okay. for being resilient, as he said yesterday, but Kenyans more so okay. for deciding firmly that we are going to find our exit out of that quagmire by following our laws, by bearing and ensuring that we went to the ballot okay. box. Senator, I have to take a short break and now and sure come back. Oh, Dr. Miguna and Otiende will respond to this. And that is right. what we had yesterday. That okay. was the culmination of the events of yesterday. That's right. what I make of it. Okay, let's yeah. take a short break. When we come back, Dr. Miguna and Otiende Amolo will respond to all the issues coming up. The reducible minimums were meant to create a gridlock, like they're saying, and the NRM part is the militia that is now attacking people. We will see what they have to say about that. We'll be back. I see a lot of your feedback coming through. We shall be reading some of them in just a bit, but this is People in Politics. Thanks for staying with us. And keep it on TV for a while. We'll be back in just a bit.
All right, thank you for staying with NTV's Decision 2017. I'm Trevor Mbija. My guest is still with me, Honorable Tiende Amolo, Rarieda Member of Parliament, Dr. Miguna Miguna, an advocate, Honorable Mithika Linturi, Senator Meru, and Kimani Wamatangi, Senator Kiambu. Thanks for making time for us. Now, uh, uh, Miguna, I'll start with you because there's been a lot of issues that have been brought up by Senator Liberation of the People in Migori yes, and yes. the Belicia. Yes. Uh, Trevor. Yes. What I have heard from uh, Senators uh, Linturi and Wamatangi are right out of the cookbook of Cambridge Analytica, the propaganda uh, outfit that has messed elections in the U.S., has messed elections here, and are going to Australia to mess elections there. Um, is there any serious Kenyan who believes that I can be taught anything by Senator Linturi? Is there any serious Kenyan? that I have to be taught civic education by Senator Linturi, or even Senator Wamatangi. I mean, these are not serious allegations that anybody can take anywhere. There is no serious. Kenyan, there is no sensible <laughs> Kenyan, intelligent, well-informed Kenyan, who believes that Miguna can be taught anything by these two gentlemen? I mean, number two. No, I'm responding. Mean, number two. You are a very, very bad student. Number two, I number mean, two. <laughs> You, you encourage they have uh, dangled the word militia, yeah. uh, and it is quite apparent they don't even understand what it means. So if you ask them, what is the definition of a militia? And how does the national resistance movement that was only announced a week ago fit that definition? They're saying that the national resistance movement that was just formed the other day is responsible for deaths. So ask them the question. When, where, how, and given the fact that Jubilee is the one uh, mismanaging the instruments of power, and they have the control of the police and all the investigative organs of government, whom have they investigated? When did they investigate them? Whom have they arrested? When did they charge them? In which court? You will find that the answer is zero, 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 because it isn't just true. Now, they say that uh, people from Migori, Homa Bay, Siaya, and Kisumu need liberation. Liberation from what? I'll answer them. The only liberation that those people and our people in other parts of Kenya because they want to alienate a group of people called the Luo and target them, single them out. Now, I will say that NASA and other people, other patriots, it's not just NASA because I don't, be, I don't belong to NASA. Yeah. I don't belong to any political party. The only liberation we are going to get and that we are fighting for is the liberation of the despotism by Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto, represented by this illegitimate Jubilee government. Okay. I'm going to call it as it is, okay. because they have dangled allegations that are completely unfounded. So that is the liberation that the people of Migori, the people of Siaya, the people of Oma Bay, and the people of other counties are fighting for. Okay. The Kenyan National Commission for Human Rights published a detailed report less than three, month, uh, three weeks ago, yeah. and these two senators should have read it because it is a constitutional body, and they have found out that in five days after the August 8th charade of an election, the police brutalized and killed 37 innocent Kenyans, 35 of them being Luo. So there is a genocide going, uh, get, going on out there, which we will call by its name. Now, if you are going to mischaracterize uh, unarmed demonstrators that are carrying twigs, that some of them may have catapults, some of them may have stones, and you are saying that these Kenyans deserve to be killed summarily on the streets, by heavily armed police. And you've seen the kind of armory that the Kenyan police have been given. The Kenyan police has been militarized. Okay. When you see the vehicles, the armored vehicles on the road, you know that they are militarized. 
There is no sensible Kenyan that is going to convince me or anybody else that Musando was a militia and should have been killed. Baby Pendo was a militia. Uh, Mora in uh, Kawangwari was a militia. The 10 people that were shot in Kisumu the other day were militias. The people that were, shot, uh, were tortured, maimed, and killed in Migori were militia. The kind of people that were killed, brutalized in Bondo, were militia. So we have to be responsible. Okay. When you have members of parliament come to live TV and not just lie, but try to peddle the worst, the vilest of propaganda yeah. against a section of Kenyan citizens, it must be condemned robustly. Okay. And All I'm right. going to do it. Let me bring in Dr. Tien. No, 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 before, no, no, before no, you respond, no, 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 before you respond, no, 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 let, no, 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 let no, no, Dr. Tien no, no, respond. Because no, 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 also Senator Matangi brought up something and said that NASA is putting their people in arms. Let me start from where Senator Matangi left. And he says that NASA should have known that the more legitimate uh, way is to go to court rather than go to the rallies. He conveniently forgets that on the eve of the elections, we have a judiciary that could not raise quorum for a scheduled hearing in the morning, but miraculously raised quorum for an unscheduled hearing by night. That is the judiciary we've come to. Indeed, where we are, the real crisis is to ask, why are all the independent institutions dying, and especially in the last four years? And I can tell you the full hog of those institutions. I think the last institution that Kenyans had hope in is the judiciary. And the judiciary, there are many independent-minded judges, especially in the High Court, and lately in the Supreme Court. But it has become clear that the Jubilee machine has targeted that last bastion of independence. And if you look at the events since the last uh, you know, Supreme Court decision, it is clear that the focus on the Supreme Court, they've intimidated the judges, and now in only 60 days, we have made history in two ways. One, we've made history in having the best Supreme Court that has the guts to nullify a presidential election. But in just less than 60 days, we have also for the first time had a situation where you have a court that cannot raise quorum. It's like going to church and you're told today there's no service because there's no pastor. It's outrageous. All the institutions that are created under the Constitution have been killed under the Jubilee Administration. And I say this because I was in the committee that wrote the Constitution. I served as ombudsman, both under President Kibaki and President Uhuru. And I have interacted with all of them. And if we have time, I can demonstrate that. I do not fear to say that. The real crisis in this country is that independent institutions which are supposed to help us when politicians are at loggerheads are all dead or on their deathbed. Let me come to the issue that uh, uh, was again raised by uh, Senator Linturi, that we need to liberate the laws. First of all, it's very unfortunate. The Jubilee machinery has worked very hard to try and tweak this thing to tweak the boycott and the elections to a Luo affair instead of a Kenyan affair. It is not only the Luos who boycotted this, this election. In the four counties in issue, the total number of votes is less, is about 1.8 million. The number of Kenyans who boycotted this, even if you go by the Chebukati's own numbers, is over 12 million. But I must tell you, and I insist on this, the information I have is that the real number of people who voted, if you look at the KMS kit, was only 3.5 million. So that means there are even more. So where are all these others? This is not about the law. This is about Kenyans who care for electoral justice. But having said that, the decision to boycott was not Raila Molodinga's decision. It was a collective decision. It was a decision made by the principals and all those who are in NASA who insist that we will have nothing less than fair, credible, and peaceful elections. Now, it is not, therefore, a question of saying who will liberate the Luos. The Luo are just one of many other Kenyan tribes who refuse to be put down by undemocratic uh, practices, and that we will not. The last thing I want to say on that is this NRM narrative. First, let us agree, and it is clear, between the Jubilee side and the NASA side, I think we know who owns the militias. I think who, we know who associates with the Nairobi business community. I think we know who uh, associates with the oath-taking Mungikis. And between the two sides, 
I think we know who's been wearing military fatigue. In fact, in this panel, the only person who's worn anything close to that is my friend Mamatangi. I hope his red barret is somewhere safe. You will never see me in that kind of thing. So when you talk militia and you try to convert it, then you wonder. That kind of reckless talk is the reckless talk that the deputy president had the other day on international media. National resistance movement is resistance to undemocratic practices. It is civil resistance by means allowed both by the constitution and by law. You have a variety of ways of looking at this. You can boycott, you can demonstrate, you can picket, you can you know, sign, you know, present petitions, all those are allowed. We have had many examples of civil resistance. In the US we had years of civil resistance. In India you know what Mahatma Gandhi did. You have even a history of that in this continent with apartheid South Africa. Indeed, even internationally, as we speak, North Korea is under sanctions. Those are ways of international community, community resisting a certain thing. So it's not about militia. Now, when then you hear the deputy president say, and Linturi here try to tweak it, that now all those who are attacking others and NRM, you see the new narrative. The new narrative is having had elections that are less than credible, the hope is that we move on. There is now the new narrative of we can talk provided we move on, provided there are no demos because it's hurting the economy. You cannot keep doing the wrong thing and asking people to move on. Some of us refuse. We insist on the right thing. Yeah. Once we get it right, then we can move on, but not until then. The dangerous narrative is this one of allowing the police and other informal groups to attack other Kenyans as appears to have started and then say, now that is the resistant movement of NASA. It's a very dangerous and irresponsible narrative. Okay. Let me bring in a soundbite from uh, Wafula Chabukati, who's the IBC chairperson. Let's try and move this forward, gentlemen, because there are certain issues that he raised when he was, when he was giving his speech. He was questioning several issues that may have gotten us where we are. So let's try and answer some of them, but here's what he was saying earlier on. Why is the presidential elections so hardly fought? What are the roots of the polarization that consumes Kenyans who are asked to friends and turn into adversaries every election cycle? Why is the Electoral Commission never perceived as a fair umpire? Omatangi, I'll start with you. Mithika, I'll we'll start with you. He's raised three fundamental questions. Let's try and answer them one by one. Why is the presidency so hotly contested? Is it time we thought about a different way? <coughs> I think there is that misconception that uh, when anyone gets the presidency, then he'll have uh, all the liberty to extend the favors to his people, to his cronies, to his family, and the sort. Is it a people misconception? Have forgotten, people have forgotten that Kenya is in a devolved system where power has been uh, equally been devolved to the counties, and that's why we have the governors and the rest, and where resources are actually and going to the counties. The, before the promulgation of the new constitution, then that would have been the truth because the closer you were to the powers that be, then it's how you really was able to get some resources going to your counties. So uh, that could be one of the reasons why people really fight for that position. But Should we consider a different way, a parliamentary system but, uh, or something? Right now, right now, and the best way to go yeah. uh, is that uh, Akinat, uh, Megunas would have legit, legitimate or genuine concern in terms of how to address the issues that really divide this country. And uh, the sooner we become truthful to each other, the better. I have I have tried to look at the history of uh, this country uh, immediately after uh, uh, Raila Ondinga in the Kibaki Tosha and uh, the Nusumkate government. I, I did not find any demonstrations or anybody in the streets. And that is when the economy peaked very well. And at this particular time, there is some, uh, they, the, whether real or not, most of the Kenyans in the country thought that the governments then were all inclusive. And uh, that inclusivity provided uh, uh, 
uh, an arena for people to go back to their business because uh, people were basically very comfortable at that time. So one of the things that I think uh, which we really need to look at as we get into the future uh, is that uh, there is need because there is need to address the underlying issues that really make this a problem. And some of the things that we may even require to look with and interrogate, interrogate. Because we cannot have a country fighting every time there is a presidential election, is whether either come with suggestions to amend the constitution and remove this aspect of voting for the president from the voter himself, or and take it to a college where probably it is the member of parliament, is the MCA, is the governor, whoever. So if, whenever, if they want to fight, they can fight there. But look at how to do it. Okay. Secondly, we, are, we also cannot really say that the, 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 the aspect of non-inclusivity is, is our design. The architecture of the constitution, as says, provides that you wins the election, uh, becomes a, a president and picks his cabinet with uh, and, uh, considering that they also must bring in the aspects of range of balance and bring over bros. One day, in one of uh, one day, one of the professors uh, that I really respect and who was in uh, uh, Raila's case uh, surprised me when we had an argument and I said that in the whole Kenyatta's cabinet, the laws are represented. And when I said the laws are represented, the professor was so mad with me because. She was saying, this really called the Rachel Amolo, who is Rachel Mama, Mama, is not a representative of the laws. So what I understood, and that's why I'm saying we really need to sit down and discuss, is that in the absence of Raila Ondinga in cabinet, then it means to them, laws are not represented. So these are some of the things we may require to look at. But I also would want to say that even this, with the current constitution, the yeah. aspect of failure to have people that have connection with the voter, with the monarchy, in the apex uh, policy making body of this nation, yeah. that is cabinet, okay. where we have no elected people seated there, is also causing us serious issues because when you pick people from different parts of the country and people are sitting there, the Luo is there, Akikuyu is there, 40 people are sitting from various, yeah. that tries to bring to some balance, balance and, so, uh, and balance the nation. Okay. So we have a, 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 a uh, 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 a technical problem that requires to be addressed through constitutional means, okay. but the major, major majority of the problem, or the biggest the test problem, is how we politically deal with the situation that we are in, okay. and that requires us to be very honest with one another, okay. to be truthful with one another, because. In my view, there is yeah. nothing that's impossible. Some All countries right. operate without a written constitution, okay. and we don't find them having serious problems. Okay. But the dishonest amongst our leaders, I think, is what is killing us. Wamatangi, and that has answered almost two questions that Chebukati has raised. Why is the presidency so hotly contested, and what is the root cause of polarization where friends turn into enemies every five-year cycle? So what are the solutions in your, in your opinion? Should we stop this system of presidency, the executive presidency, and bring in the parliamentary system? Or bring in the issue? I spoke to Okia Omtata sometimes back, and he was bringing in a very interesting aspect. He was saying that, why don't we change it into a point form? Not the electoral college form, form uh, per se, where we have 47 counties, 290 constituencies. Make it into point form. That makes about 337 points. So that in Kisumu, where you have six constituencies, the total of there you can get is seven points. That's six constituencies plus one for the county. For Kiambu, where there are 12 constituencies plus the county, that's 13 points. Therefore, even if you win Kiambu with 1.2 million votes, it doesn't matter. You'll still just get the 13 points. And therefore, you still have to traverse the country to get at least 169 points. That makes everybody else feel included, rather than this tyranny of numbers. What do you think? Well, I, I think uh, to answer to answer your question, yes. and, and, and I will answer it you know, straightforward because I think it's not a it's not a problem with with figures or numbers or, or sections or communities. It is a problem with individuals. Uh, I mean, the people, the participants, the players. I mean, when you have when you have key people in positions, uh, you know, of leadership of advice, uh, like Miguna Miguna here. Who, who, who thinks that he's at the apex of knowledge, that, that, that he has nothing to, to, to learn 
anymore in life, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and and that, uh, you know, I mean, surely, and I say that very respectably, but you know, if a man comes to, to, to the city of Nairobi and runs for governor and fails to be elected, uh, I mean, and, and then you say, I, I have nothing to learn in life, and, I, and, and there's nothing I can be taught. I mean, if, 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 if a man gets a job in the PM's office and gets fired and says that I have nothing to learn in, in life, and then you're saying that that is the advisor to, to, to a major coalition like NASA to make on decisions, then how do you say? I mean, you see, uh, uh, history and knowledge is very clear, you know, my, my friend, that, that, you know, once you find a man at a point in his life where he <laughs> says and believes fully, that he has learned everything in life and that he knows everything, then you're dealing with a, with, with a very dangerous man. Mm. You know why I say that? Because if you listen to some of the terminologies used here by, 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 by Miguna Miguna so carelessly about genocide, about mass massacre, you know, I mean, you cannot, you can't. I mean, you see, and, and we had this debate uh, the last time here. Uh, There's an absolute difference, a world apart, a world apart of schooling learning, wisdom, and education. And, and, and I believe uh, my, my good friend here, Miguna, must, must, must agree to open up at least a small vent in that uh, big uh, you know, chamber of his knowledge and, and allow him some, 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 some extra knowledge that will, that will give him some, some little caution yes. so that he knows when he's speaking here on national TV, he should be able to be not only restrained but, but see things that, that, that are not reckless. Okay. You know, You've mentioned but, but, but individuals, so how do you fix it? That? Yes. I will respond. You know, yes, I, I, I will I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll tell you one or two things yes. uh, about this question that you've asked. And, and let, me, l let me pose it with, with what uh, Otiende Amolo said when he finished speaking. Now, can you imagine? And, and Otiende Amolo, I want to say, is a gentleman that I respect a lot as a lawyer. I knew him a long time when he was ombudsman, and I have seen how he does some of his things. He's a respectable man. But, but I, also, I also want to caution him, really, as a friend, because out of that history and all the things that he has done, he has just been elected into, in, into parliament. And he has just gotten himself now into the hypercenter or the yes. epicenter of politics as an elected member. Mm. And you know, we have seen, there have been so many good people who, have, who, who are really icons in, in knowledge, but once they get blended with bad politics, yes. they become terrible people and they lose it all. And, and, and my, my worry would be that a brain like Otiende Omolo would get in, in, in a, a concoction and a cocktail of, of, of uh, people in NASA and the leadership they've had, so that he would lose it himself and, and say some of the things that would not be coming from Otiende Amolo. Okay. I'll tell you why. You see, there is no single beneficiary from, for example, the Supreme Court who have benefited from matters that they have raised and took to the Supreme Court more than NASA led by himself. He was in the lead team of lawyers who went to the Supreme Court to... Uh, to, to, to petition the presidential election. It was historic. They got their way from that court. Remember when we were going to the election, it was clear and it is in record there were more than 300 cases in the courts of Kenya taken by the NASA group. Okay. And, and, and they won most of those. Other than praising that they, they had their way then, and, and, and that got us to where we are right now, and, and, and of course, they don't have to have it their way all the time for them to, to, to praise those institutions. Okay. So I, I want, to, I, I want to, to, to urge uh, my friend there, let's, let's be sincere, let us uh, be, be truthful. If NASA had wanted to prosecute the issues that they wanted to on those so-called irreducible minimums, they knew that they had all the time. Remember, when the Supreme Court made, the, made its decision, they said, hold the fresh presidential elections in 60 days. Okay. There were 60 days for them to go and take those irreducible... Senator, minimum. we are going to back court. to this conversation. So, I wanted so, us to move yeah, on. So we, you, which you way know, after Chibukati raised certain that questions? That yes. Because I am addressing it because every lead, everything leads to the next. And, and all those issues that you have advanced to the point where you asked the last question are originated by exactly what they have been doing. And so, and so okay. once they introspect, once they become sincere in themselves 
as to how do they want to get things done, then okay. you don't have these other problems. Lastly, let me say this, because uh, we've had uh, this, this big talk uh, also about, uh, you know, who are mili militias, and you had actually my, my good friend again talking about me having a red beret. And, and you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, didn't, you we, didn't do justice, because we agreed the last time. We had that Trevor, picture on the newspaper the last time. That, that you are going to bring a sample here for Tende Amolo and Miguna Miguna of a Boy Scout Beret, of a Salvation's Army hat, and so, so, that, so that you can put them there and we display, they can know the difference. Maybe, maybe they're, they're both at that point where they, they have known so much in life that they have nothing more to learn even about uniform. You know, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, this, 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 talk about, this talk about militia, yes. Trevor, is, is serious talk in Kenya. It is dangerous talk. We have been there. We saw and we have read the history of our forefathers in the bushes, fighting against our colonizers. Yeah. We have had the progression in bad politics when we have had groups of Chinkorodo and others all over this country. And we know what that means. And that is a history that is behind us. Okay. I want to say to our colleagues in NASA that this is not a pet thing that we can play about with. And stop this, this uh, posing and posturing that you, that, that, that you have started, including, including trying to portray Jubilee and mixing it with, uh, you heard what Miguna was talking about, Jumungiki attacked who and who in this place and this place. Can we move out of that narrative? I'll tell you what. After, after the swearing in of His Excellency the President, Okay. Uh, after the, 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 the events have rolled out now, now that he was declared the president-elect, what this country needs to engage in is a healing process. And the faster that these gentlemen learn that everything that has a beginning must have an end, appreciate that they went to the Supreme Court okay. and they asked for a process to be initiated. That process was initi initiated and it has now been finalized in an election being held with a winner already announced, okay. then the way forward from there is to finalize that process. Kenyans have been waiting to exhale for long. Okay. I mean, they, they, we have held our breath for too long All right. about the All right, politics. You, you made so, your so, point. So yes, can we, yes, let's can bring we in Dr. Have Miguna on NASA this one. now yes. sobering up? Okay. We agree we have a nation to, to, to run. We are all leaders. Okay. We have been elected to represent our people. The presidential right. election now is done. Senator, so you made your point already. Is now, okay. uh, to, ensure to heal the nation. That we yes, heal the nation. Dr. Miguna, yeah. I am not going to move on. Okay. I am not going to move on. I'm going to tell Senator Wamatangi that this sense of entitlement that he has and his fellow Kikuyu elite have will not be acceptable to me and many other Kenyans. Number one, the so-called tyranny of numbers is a lie. It was exposed on August 8th. It was exposed again on October 26th. They don't have the numbers. Both President Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto do not have the numbers. They did not win on August 8th, and clearly they have lost the referendum on October 26th, they got less than 27% of the, the total votes of Kenyans. Number three, there is nothing I can learn from both Senator Wamatani and Linturi. I'm very proud to say that. There is no contradiction. What can they teach me? They can't teach me law. They can't teach me democracy. They can't teach me logic. They can't teach me facts. They can't teach me history. What is it that you are capable of teaching me? You can't even teach me language. Okay, let, so let, the fact of the matter is this. Okay. I am proud to say that these two gentlemen have nothing to teach me. And in fact, they have zero to add to the national discourse. Number four, uh, uh, there was no legitimate election in August and in October. Number five, Pandering myths and, and propaganda that is concocted by Cambridge Analytica will not help these two gentlemen, nor will it help uh, Jubilee. Everyone knows that Miguna was never fired from the office of the Prime Minister, I was reinstated and I rejected it. But their intention is to divert the attention. Okay. We are not talking about myself here. You asked the question about Chebukati's so-called question, rhetorical questions, yes. which were diversionary and irrelevant, and I am going to deal with. One, Chebukati was not hired to ask questions. Chebukati was hired to conduct fair 
uh, transparent and credible elections. Did he conduct a credible election? He did not conduct a credible election on August 8th. No superior body than the Supreme Court said that, and we believe it. And we've seen the charade, uh, charade that they did yeah. on October 26th. Number two, um, Chebukati's electoral fraud is only rivaled by what was done by uh, the first president of Kenya, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, in the little election of 1966. That is when uh, ghosts and dead people voted and defeated Kagia in Kandara. I am ashamed to say as a Kenyan that Kagia, the patriot, represented a constituency that is now being represented by Alice Wahome, a thug, a person who beat up an electoral officer no, She's on not live here to TV. defend herself. She's not here to defend herself. So she doesn't have to defend that. herself. She was caught on live TV. I, I'm, we I'm all obligated saw to it. give equal platforms. So my I'll just friend, let that one my slide. friend, you don't need to. She had a platform. She had a press conference. I had no right of reply. I am replying to her today. I am saying Alice Wahome is a thug. Number four. Now, there is no rule of law constitutionalism or principles of integrity yeah. that supports any of the things that my friends have said with respect to democracy, with respect to elections. Elections do not just have to be fair in the sense that uh, a major player, NASA, and they have millions of supporters, a lot of independents like me yeah. who did not vote and were not told not to vote. I'm not the kind of person that anybody believes can be dictated to by anyone. That Miguna don't vote and I don't vote. I make decisions based on facts. But did you vote? The fact is, there was no election. To vote? tell you the truth, uh, uh, Honorable Wamatangi, I'm afraid to say yes. that I made a big mistake of voting for Uru Kenyatta on August 8th. I regret that. Oh, you voted for I did, name? I did. Where did you vote? No, and this, I'm going, no, listen to me, please. I will never do it because I'm, I'm honest. I'm honest unlike you. And what? because Uhuru Kenyatta perpetrated a fraud on Kenyans, yeah. I have said I will never ever support him. No. Uhuru Kenyatta does not respect Kenyans. He does not respect the principles of democracy. He believes that he was born a leader. Now, this myth that only the Kikuyus on business, only the Kikuyus on the economy must be deconstructed. All Kenyans pay taxes, all Kenyans are hardworking, all Kenyans are contributing to the economy. What is destroying this country's economy is the looting, the rapacious looting of the Jubilee government. We know that one of the principles in the Jubilee government became a multi-billionaire in five years. Okay. Now, we'll give you a chance to respond. Let us just conclude. Conclude then, conclude, then we let I them respond. I have to respond. finish. Yes. We know that this yes. gentleman... Please, let me finish. Let, let him conclude, then I'll let you respond. We know the, That's why you're both here, from both sides. Yes, yes. You see, we never... We never heckle. Okay, conclude, conclude, no, 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 Trevor, I never heckle when they speak. Yes. I never interrupt them when they speak. They must let me speak. Okay, finish up. Make, they let's have make no brief right points. To call anybody anything here. Okay. This is a public forum and we are going to tell them. Okay. Listen. Okay, just conclude. The corruption in the health ministry that lost Kenyans billions of shillings, the corruption in the ministry of devolution that lost us billions, the corruption in many other sectors of the economy yeah. that have lost Kenyans billions did not occur by themselves. And it occurred under their watch. Okay. They cannot now purport to come here. I'll let you respond. I'll let you respond. Just let, let him finish. Don't Conclude. Heckle. Don't heckle. Wamatangi, I'll let you respond. Honorable Just let him finish. Honorable Wamatangi, don't heckle. I have been critical. Okay. I am the only one of the very few Kenyans that have been critical of the Prime Minister, Honorable Raila Odinga, and have been when critical of, of, uh, of Uhuru Kenyatta. Listen, Trevor, truth be told, yeah. you're, you're if someone like me was a hypocrite and an opportunist like my 
gentle, my fellow panelists, I would be supporting Uru Kenyatta because they are in power, because they are rich. They are the ones who can give me any benefits. No, they would be giving me... Let, let no, him no, finish. No. Let him you finish. have seen Tumbocrats yeah. who have crossed to support them because they are either looking for jobs okay. or they are looking for money. Okay. I'm not interested in either. All right. I'm interested... Can you um, Tangi, can Tangi, just you let him finish. I'll give you a chance to respond. I will, I will let you respond. I'll give you a solid time. Let, let's, let's have some level of decorum in this conversation. Just finish up, then Wamatangi, I'll give you a chance to respond right after TN. Can I finish? All Let I him finish. Saying, Let him finish. Listen to me. Can you please? I have not received any job offer from anyone, and if okay. I did, okay. I would be entitled to it because okay. I'm a just, Kenyan, just make your point, Dr. Make that. your point so that we move this conversation. I am ahead. not going to apologize for standing for the truth. I am not going to equivocate on matters of principle. Okay. I am not going to be uh, muzzled on issues of justice. Okay. And I am going to say here that if they make a mistake, and they would likely do it, yeah. if they make a mistake of swearing in Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta as President of Kenya illegitimately, we are going to fight him by all means necessary until we remove him. There you go again. No, 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 that I can promise you. Do you mean the Supreme and we are going Court? To do, it do you mean the constitutional means? Let's, let's make this very clear. Is it constitutional? My friend, you're, you're not talking about violence friend, here, right? No, let's let's make this why clear. Are you jumping into no, that, that's why I'm asking why you, you what, what, what do you mean? What I do you mean any means necessary? Listen, yes, let's friend, make the clarification. Trevor, then I bring in Dr. Tiende. Womatangi, well, just hold on one Trevor, second. Let, let him finish. conclude. Let him yes. conclude. Let, let Dr. Tiende talk about this. Womatangi, well, I'm coming to you. I will give you a chance to respond. Let, let, let Dr. Tiende talk about this. Then I'll come to you. Senator, I'll come to you. Senator, I'm coming to you, Dessam. Just let Dr. Tiende finish. Yes. There are some four issues. You That's the reason why you have two and two, one side and the other side. That's the reason why you come in. That's, Trevor, you will give your views after him. Trevor, That's the reason you why you're here. Well, I'm just the arbiter here. So, let's Senator, say, Senator, let, let Dr. Tiende finish and then I'll come to you. Let's, let's just make that clear. Let, let him finish, then I'll come to you, Senator. Senator, no, no, let's no, no, decorum. No, no, no. Let's, let's have some decorum in this, in this conversation. Senator, Senator, let Dr. Tiende finish. No, 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 Senator. Senator, don't make me switch off your mic, Senator. Don't, don't make me switch off your microphone. Let him finish, then I'll come to you. Dr. Tiende, go ahead. I'm coming to you, Senator. I said I'll, I'll come to you after this. Yes, that's what we're going to do. Everybody has their time to speak, then I'll come to you. And answer your two questions, which have been answered at length by my three colleagues. And in the course of this, they've made some statements. So let me start with the statement Senator Amatangi made. He cautioned me, and I take the caution, that I am new in politics and that I should be careful. I want to tell Senator Amatangi, the one thing about my history is that I always stand for the truth. I have no fear at all because right now I'm on the right side of history. It's not about Jubilee or NASA. It is about what is right for this country, not what is convenient. What is right for this country is to get it right on electoral justice. If we don't get it right, then we'll be in this vicious circle every five years as we have been for the last few years. There is no question of saying, let us now move on. And we've been in this forum before the elections, before the first election. I said that we needed to have a conversation about how to have free, fair, and credible elections. They said, NASA is putting hurdles on the way of IBC. What happened? IBC conducted its elections. It was nullified. After that, we raised the irreducible minimum. What it was going to take to have credible elections. Now Senator Wamatangi says, why didn't you take those to court? You cannot take irreducible minimums to court. The court does not determine for you what is reducible and not. The court waits to nullify. It is the IBC that must address it. The IBC did not address it. So right now, now that we have seen this charade, and now that President Uhuru has been declared as having won, the narrative changes. Let us heal the nation. Let us accept and move on. We cannot keep accepting and moving on and getting it wrong every five years. That is not what democracy is about. Democracy is about getting it right in the first place. And that's why for me, we will not tire, and I cannot tire, to insist that what we must have a conversation about is how to have proper free fair and credible election, not how to move on. Secondly, about the Supreme Court, and I think there's something that is being lost here. I think you must ask yourself, with the last election, when we went to the Supreme Court, 
the Jubilee team was very hostile. Even when the Supreme Court asked that the servers be opened and the IBC itself accepted, the Jubilee team resisted. Why is the president the first now to add that we go to the Supreme Court? I think there's something there that must be examined. It must be examined in the context of what has happened. I think, and I said this before and I repeat, that most independent institutions are dead. It is clear to me that the Jubilee team believes that it has now succeeded in muzzling the judiciary, especially the Supreme Court, and in a variety of ways, whether it's through you know, coincidences of shootings of the you know, deputy CJ or through trailing and tracing or attacking the judges and calling them Wakora and all that, we don't know. Whether they've succeeded or not, the jury is still out on. But I can tell you that as an advocate and as a practitioner in the Supreme Court and elsewhere, I feel much less confident of the ability of the Supreme Court to be an independent arbiter now than I did two months ago. But let me now come to your question. Yeah. Chebukati asked two questions. One, why is IBC perceived as not fair and credible? I think he gave the answers to that question. His two memos to, che, uh, to Chiloba answered that question. His address of 18th of October, six days before the elections, uh, eight days before the elections, answered that question. And the issues raised by Dr. Kombe answers it beyond doubt that the IBC is a partisan, formless institution that cannot conduct any credible election. So he poses the second question. Why is the presidency so hard fought? Yeah. As a person who was involved in writing the constitution, I must say that it is regrettable that the institution of the presidency is still so hard fought because we believed we had decongested all the powers from the presidency. We had transferred the powers to the National Assembly, to the devolved units, and to other independent institutions. The reality of what has happened is that the president has succeeded in calling back the powers that were given to the parliament. Parliament is no longer independent. It does what the president wants. That's the first reason. The second reason is the independent institutions have not been given the space to be independent. And when the independent institutions are controlled by the presidency, then the urge to have your person at the helm becomes alive because there will be no independence. And the third thing is what the president himself has said. He has used the presidency as an occasion to distribute goodies. In his own words, that you can kula nyama na wengine wanangalia. So people believe that if you capture the presidency, then you will have the food. The rest will be looking. That's not the way it should be. It should be that as the president, you are merely a general overseer okay. and people get distribution equally. The real problem is that despite the words of the constitution that requires ethnic and regional balance in terms of all the positions or opportunities in this country, only two tribes have benefited from that. And I can say that again. Okay. And when only two tribes benefit from that, then those who are not in those, that tribe believe that for you to benefit, your own must be there. Okay. That is the answer to Chibukati. Right. Wometangi, you wanted you had a burning response. Uh, well, uh, yes, I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> now the floor is yours. And you, and you give me... And you have to stop echoing. <laughs> and, and you give me time. You know, first, let me, let me also <laughs> caution you, <laughs> Trevor, so very seriously. <laughs> That you cannot intimidate me. That <laughs> I wasn't intimidating you, Senator. We're just having some level of decorum on this. Stop the microphone. I would still have my mouth. <laughs> and I would use it effectively. <laughs> so, that was not meant to intimidate so you. Just some I level of decorum in this conversation we have. <laughs> having, having made that statement, because, uh, you know, I have to express myself. I'll tell you All what, right, go uh, ahead. You know, uh, I believe that uh, in the debate that we have here, we must have a sober debate we must also realize all the time, like you heard me say in my opening statements, that, that Kenyans are following us, they watch us all the time. If you go to Twitter most of the time, after this show, you find that this show normally stops trending every Tuesday. That means that people follow this, this show. So if we do not have exercise restraint, if you allow that this is a free for all and that Miguna can come and drop any adjectives he likes and say anything that he likes because you can't stop him because he's shouting, then that is wrong. But that's why you're here to respond. Me, you said I have the floor. Yes. Yes. What See, I'm saying is very simple. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm <laughs> saying finish, is very simple. Uh, Trevor, 
that, that, that we must be guided in our discussion. You know when you use the terms, that's what I said when you use the terminologies, genocide, we shall do anything that we like, defend ourselves in every possible way. I mean, that's irresponsible. And, and, and because you cannot, you are the host, we have to do. We are the, we, we, we are, we are the political leaders. And when we are sitting here, we have not let, left our leadership in our cars. We are still leaders when we are here. So that is why we have to lead Miguna. Okay. And, 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 and I hope very soon he can also get elected. And once he gets elected, he can know and understand that term, term of being responsible a little more in a different yeah, way. No I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think he understands it only in the classroom context. He must understand it in, 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 a, in a wider, in a wider con, uh, you know, context because I find it disagreeable. And you remember there was a, there was a discussion we had here. I don't know who, it was you still who was that? No, it was uh, your other colleague. Dibal. Dibal. And uh, not Dibal. Uh, Ken. Ken Mijungu. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you remember when my own colleague uh, Kimani Chungwa came here and there was an issue about a Twitter, it was discussed, and then there was a persistence that actually he has to withdraw and apologize. He explained. Remember, that time uh, Otiende Amolo said, I will walk out. And he walked out because he felt that that was not right. Now, unless you want us to lead us to the point whereby we will say that we will walk out when Miguna is here, we will. Because, you, you know, he, he, cannot, he cannot continue to, 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 to throw everything that, 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 that he has here so irresponsibly. Like, like, like he's, he's a rolling stone, he's, he's on a free fall. But Senator, isn't that why you're here, to yeah, counter yeah, yeah, that discussion? Absolutely. Yeah, that's so that's why I'm here, letting but, you but, but that, that clarify why, everything and why, counter his argument. Trevor, yes. That is why my persistence was on you as the host, to ensure that the rules of the debate are observed. I mean, if, if I came here and I said everything that I, that I think I would say that is an imagine, you would tell me, Senator, you are out of order. So, so why does it seem so difficult for you to say that to Miguna when he's ranting? Come Be on. Because you you're here serious. to counter because that. No, no, it's let, your let, statement. Let's, let's, let's get now to it, When he responds to you, know, I give you a chance know, to respond you know, to him. You know, uh, you know, I, I, I want to make... I want to make my position clear. As far as, as far as that discussion is concerned, yes. Trevor, that for this debate to continue to enjoy the viewership and the respect that it has among its Kenyans, the panelists on this, on this forum, including and so much so Miguna Miguna, must not only modulate his language, but he must apply responsibility to his talk. He cannot, we cannot allow him to just continue to talk like he's talking to himself. Okay. He can say those things in his bedroom. You're going to let him finish. No, no, so no, now, you, I, now you want I, to I, respond. Okay. All right. All right. No, 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 no. Let's, let's, let's not degenerate this conversation. Let's not degenerate this into a one-on-one. -on -one. Gentlemen, let's not, let's not degenerate this into... No, 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 no. This is not the kind of conversation we're having. This is not the kind of conversation we're having. As I said, as I said... Yes, to stop. Yeah, just let's know, not you get into this okay fine let, let him finish and you know what when i make the point no 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 I'm I'm the no, no, no. Point. dr miguna and senator Omatangi, let's just have a decorum observe decorum and speak about the issues that are here okay all right that has gone on let, let's finish let's let's go on okay and, and i said trevor you apply the rules of debate yeah, make your point. The, the make your point. That you apply to to tell Kemani Shumwa to apologize and the same rules so that they want to apply to the Guna Miguna. He's okay. not special. Okay. Yeah. Mm. okay, so so having said that, and you know, by, by the way, Trevor, I've been on this panel for a long time. Mm. A very long time. Give you a I am I am no, no. I, I I I know my conscience, I know where I how I look at my country and how I look at myself, and I know and I have an obligation to be responsible. To ensure that Move. I Senator, you still issue. haven't responded Move. what you wanted to respond to. Excuse me, Miguna. Move you know, on. You, you're, you're going to have to, to, to keep quiet. And, Move you know, on. I, Senator, Senator, let's you know, get to the point. You, 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 know, you know, Trevor, I'm not here upon the invitation of this general. Don't heckle us. At all. I'm here upon the invitation but of the Let's Let not have this Move contest, on. Senator. Let's, let's I, have, on. Okay. I, have, I have insisted on that point so that when we leave this panel, you're not going to upon, upon the next invitation, if if Trevor, you do not apply the rules of the debate, debate to Miguna Miguna, is this then you want to move on. Okay. Yes. First of all, just to, def to, to diffuse this tension, I, I, I let me let me, let me bring in Usha. Usha, let 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 Usha read the feedback from the people, and then after this, we'll just wrap up the debate because it's degenerating into something I did not intend it to be. Usha, what are they saying online? Uh, we have Kevin who says, "I think the government shouldn't be castigating having a resistance movement, but asking why it's there in the first place." We also have Joe who says, "NASA should exhaust all the legal channels of." 
available to challenge, to challenge the legitimacy of the election, that way no one dies or suffers. We have Harmony who says this election has divided Kenya even more than before. We have Josh who says it's just a sign of things to come ex uh, or expect. This nation needs healing or things will fall apart. We have uh, Omondi who says Raila Odinga will speak for the 62% of us who didn't vote in a shared election. Uh, how will the tyrant rule his people with 27% win? Uh, we also have Kimani who says, as a citizen, my only prayer is that a win for uh, Uhuru Kenyatta is a win for Kenyans and not Jubilee Party. We have um, Onduko who says, now that Uhuru Kenyatta has successfully gone through the semis, let's plan for the finals with Raila Odinga in 90 days time. We also have uh, Kimani who says, uh, as citizens, what we can do now is put our leaders before God in prayer for them to make the best decisions for Kenya. We also have uh, Lawi who says, JP has succeeded in changing the narrative. Now NASA is busy defending that they are not militia. We have um, Omondi who says, let the battles begin. It is now Jubilee versus Kenyans. This battle has just begun. It is not ending soon. Not yet. Brace yourselves. We also have uh, James who says, I wish to pass my personal best wishes to our KCPE candidates countrywide as they sit for their exams. God be with them. Peace. And finally, we have John who says, impunity is often mistaken for democracy. Democracy in Kenya exists only in theory, but impunity and state capture are thriving. Right, so that is obviously uh, the, of course, the tweets that we have managed to um, air. But of course, there's a lot more. Hashtag AM Live and TV. That is how you can keep the conversation going. Back to you, Trevor. <laughs> Thanks, Usha. And I know you avoided the ones where people are complaining about our shouting matches around here. <laughs> I, <laughs> I appreciate you did not want to aggravate the situation. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's not get into that. Final remarks, starting from you, Matangi, up to the end. No one interjects. 30 seconds each. Thank you, thank you. Um, well, let, 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 me, let, me, let me finalize my yes. final remarks by saying that, indeed, as Kenyans, we must address issues all the time level-headedly and not when it suits us. And I say that because uh, of some of the allegations that were made by some of my colleagues and especially Otende Amolo that independent institutions are dying. We remember very well, it's clear on our minds, that we sent officers of the IEBC led by Isaac Hassan, upon the agitation by, 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 by the NASA team. So because they thought and they believed then, I hope so, that they were going to get fairness out of that, that, that uh, process. And we brought in a new IBC okay. to ensure that we addressed what they were talking about. And, and, and it does not mean that then these institutions would only be alive and well when it serves their purpose. Okay. It's when it serves the purpose of Kenyans. And I want to, to, to state finally in my final statement to my friend uh, Trevor that as a Kenyan, I believe that we have to address issues responsibly. I am a responsible Kenyan. I believe that every person, irrespective of whatever community they come from, whether they are from Western or Eastern or South, they are Kenyans. They deserve respect. Okay. And I've been elected to be able to show leadership that is free, that is fair, that is truthful and honest. Okay. And that is why you find when I make my comments, I make my comments on that latitude. All right. And that is why I cannot be silenced when I have to point out <coughs> what is wrong even when it ha have to hurt maybe my colleague a All little right. bit. All right. Make Mithika. sure that we have to say what is right. Okay. Yes. Mithika Lindri, 30 yeah, seconds, my, final uh, remarks. With your respect, uh, yes. uh, I, my, my comments are directed to Miguna. And uh, I, I have something to teach or to advise Miguna, despite the fact that he dis respects me and says that I have nothing to offer. One is that... Uh, I have, I can be able to, 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 advise, him, uh, to advise him that humility peace. I can advise him it is uh, it, it, the importance of being tolerant. I can also tell him that when we appear before this, uh, uh, in this panel to discuss matters uh, soberly and objectively, the standards of care and duty on us are completely different. Okay. Because for, uh, the, the, the gentlemen sitting here are representatives of the people of Kenya in different capacities. I have won elections and interrupted four times. So even if there was nothing else, Moiguna would be somebody who would have borrowed from me on how to win elections, having attempted the governor 
for Nairobi and miserably failed. And finally, you remember when I started, I said Maguna must be aware of where this militia is training or who these people are. And even before the conclusion of the debate, despite the fact that he was saying he's getting, you know, he started by saying he's getting photos from the, from the people on the ground, be, yeah. being, meaning that he's the commander. And before the final, before the conclusion of the debate, he's come out to say that you yeah. fight in whichever way and by all means to make sure that they remove all from power. You cannot have that confidence of trying to engage a government that has monopoly of violence by way of law without really having a command or without having a team that yeah. you are in charge and control of. And that's why I insist that these people must be the police and the other, the, uh, 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 other agencies that maintain security must always be uh, uh, be uh, 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 on alert okay. because Kenya requires right. to be secure. All right, Miguna, final remarks, 30 so, seconds this time. Trevor, Trevor, yes. if, I, if I did not uh, ask my colleagues, then I would not be effective. I'm happy that they are very irritated because I intended it. But I intended it, please. Yeah, no, you, you see now he's doing that again. Let, let's just finish I kept quiet remarks. when he was speaking. I am only guided by facts, the truth, fairness, and justice. In November 2010, Hosni Mubarak of Egypt won, quote unquote, 83 seats in the National Assembly in Egypt and was decorated as the winner. Barely three months later, in February 2011, he was removed from power. Nicolae Sascescu of Romania in 1989 was removed from power by the citizens when they said no. In 1994, in Madagascar, a DJ overthrew a despot from power. So when I say that we will fight despotism by any means necessary, I am completely aligned in history. And you go back to the fight for liberation in this country, both against the British colonialists and during the second liberation. We did it. We did it successfully and we won. We are going to win again. Okay. There is no way, Trevor, that I am going to be silenced. Whether they manage to muzzle you at the NTV and force you not to invite me will not stop me from speaking. Because I know that is what they are trying to do. I'm not intimidated by government. I'm not intimidated by guns. I'm not intimidated by money. And I really don't care that these people were computer okay. generated okay. and now they think that they were popularly elected. Okay. All right. There you was no election on August okay. 8th and there was no governor duly elected. All right. All right. And when elections come, and they will, I will defeat this drug dealer that you call a governor. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's bring in Dr. Uh, Tienda Molo to defuse this entire situation. And by the way, NTV is not controlled by anyone out there. Dr. Tienda. Uh, Trevor. Yes. No Kenyan is more Kenyan than the other. Yes. And therefore, yes. the sense of entitlement that you can go through elections that do not meet the test of credibility, and provided your person is at the helm, then you can say, let us now negotiate, let us talk peace, is one that cannot be accepted. Okay. We must insist and we can talk, but we must talk on electoral justice, not questions of how to cover the charade. The National Resistance Movement is a lawful movement of resistance, civil resistance by lawful means, not by military means. And we will continue using all the means available to us, whether it means by a declaration of the court, whether it be the Supreme Court, whether it means by exercise of Article 37 rights, the right to assemble, the right to demonstrate, the right to picket, and, the, and all those other rights. We will continue until we get electoral justice. But if it should come a time when it is clear that this cycle of electoral injustice must continue and cannot be dealt with, then we must go back to the Constitution. We must go back to Article 25, we must go back to Article 38, we must go back to Article 256 and 257 and question whether this unity works for all of us or only for some of us and consider cessation. Okay. All right. Thank you. No.
Yeah, really. Matangi, let's leave it there. My, my, even my director is really upset at this point. She says good morning to you. You happen to be a senator. Well, Matangi, we have to finish. We have to end this. Final comment. That was it. The secession talk is something we'll talk about next time. You'll always be here on Tuesday. We'll talk about No, no, no. We can't have that now. I want to thank you all for coming this morning. Senator Omatangi Kiambu, Miteka Linturi Meru Kiameru Senator, Dr. Miguna Miguna Advocate, and Otienda Amolo, Ombudsman Emeritus, Member of Parliament, Rarieda. Thank you for watching. That's why we leave it on Decision 2017. My name is Trevor Mbija. Always a pleasure. <laughs>